And we begin with breaking news. Hurricane Ian is ripping through the state of Florida. This is a live look at the Sunshine Skyway. This is over Tampa Bay. There you see no cars on the freeway. Ian made landfall a couple of hours ago as a massive Cat 4, just shy of a Category 5. Yeah, Ian is creating a catastrophic storm surge and flooding in some areas. Uh, first responders are getting calls from people trapped in their homes in these powerful winds. Uh, you can see they're ripped down power lines and since sparks flying in Fort Myers. To give you an idea of just how powerful Ian is, water levels in Fort Myers rose six feet in a span of seven hours. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Lawrence. And I'm Cynthia Isaguirre. Right now, more than one million people in Florida are without power. Power lines are down throughout the area. This video was taken in downtown Naples, which is south of Fort Myers. Look at that. And the number of outages is expected to keep rising as the storm moves through. In an update 10 minutes ago, Governor DeSantis said as soon as it's safe to do so, crews will head out to restore power. He said the storm surge and flooding has been incredible. Some areas have seen water as high as 12 feet. Major flooding tonight in low lying areas like Clay County. This is in the Jacksonville metropolitan area around the St. Johns River. Yeah, our first responders are not immune to natural disasters as we've seen in the past. This is video from the Naples Fire Department showing the firehouse flooded. Crews are doing their best to get equipment out of there We're before the water gets the higher. And uh, a couple things, Pete. So when did Ian make landfall and where is it going now? Just a couple of hours ago. I mean, so this is just the beginning. Yeah. I mean, this has just happened a couple of hours ago. Remember, the storm surge forecast is, you know, 12 to 18 feet. Yeah. You know, I mean, so things will only worsen as the night moves along. And then, you know, it's dark. Mm. And that's when things get pretty tense. Yeah. Things get pretty tense. I want to show you exactly where this did make landfall. It was just to the just to the west of Fort Myers, one of the barrier islands, uh, Cayo Costa. That's where it made landfall. Uh, it happened at 205 central time, so 305 local time. Category four winds near 150 miles an hour. This right now, this is the strongest hurricane to hit the continental US since Ida last year and the strongest hurricane to hit Florida since Michael category five up in the panhandle of Florida. That was back in 2018. So that's the latest right now. Look at the eye of this thing. I mean, still a well defined eye as it starts to move inland here in southwestern Florida. Take a look at that. Winds still 130. Category 4, winds of 130, gusting to 180. Uh, Punta Gorda right now, 35 miles southwest of there. So it's near Port Charlotte. It'll still be when it's up around Haines City, which is south of Disney, south of Orlando, north of Sebring. It'll still be a hurricane. That's at 1 o'clock in the morning. Winds still of 85 miles per hour. And then as it moves off right now, the official track has it just to the east of Orlando. Uh, just to the north of the Kennedy Space Center, winds of 65. That's tomorrow afternoon. And then it moves offshore around Daytona, and then it makes a second landfall uh, up here in uh, South Carolina, right around the South Carolina Georgia line, most likely north of that line in South Carolina, but still lots of problems. And, and still, we are looking at tropical storm warnings and hurricane warnings in effect from Tampa all the way south of Marco Island. And there's that storm surge forecast. It has been lowered right now because the system has made landfall. Remember, the forecast had it up to 18 feet. It's still in play for up to 10 feet for some locations. And the winds, right, we have winds right now of 130. So obviously, we have winds of 130 with this system. So anywhere from 110 plus, in the forecast as we head through uh, the next handful of hours and look at the rain 10 to 15 some locations anywhere from right along the I-4 corridor from Tampa up to Orlando then up to Daytona you know a foot foot and a half maybe up to two feet of rain so big problems there no problems here for us nice weather continues across North Texas we drop into the middle 60s tomorrow morning I'll be back in a few minutes with more on that but the problems right now continue to take place across the state of Florida Sydney do you have the latest on that Take it from here. We're going to check out flight situations first. So come on over here and let's take a look. A lot of these airports on the west coast of Florida, even some of those inland, completely shut down. So no flights in and out. And that's because this is the situation that we're dealing with over here. Take a live look at our earth cams right here. And you know what? Let's start with Hillsborough Beach from the Lighthouse Cam. We're just north of Miami. Look at the tree on the left side of your screen just blowing in the wind there. Those winds really strong at this hour. Pete was just talking about them. Now to Port Charlotte. We're just north of Fort Myers now on the Gulf side. And look at this. Those trees hanging on for dear life. The camera itself is shaking. We're 
whatever it's attached to. You see those winds blowing there in the rain. And then one look at Naples here. Look at the water just crashing over the pier. Thankfully that nobody's out there on that pier taking a look at what's going on. Very thankful because that is not safe. No traffic on the pier, no traffic on the highway as well. This is I-75 right there in Florida. No cars. And that's because you'll notice a lot of these counties in red under mandatory evacuation routes. And actually, now I want to send things over to my colleague, Sydney Persing. Sydney, you used to work in this area. I know you talked to people in this area. What are they telling you today? Yeah, Ariel, actually, as of June, I lived right in Fort Myers, uh, right on the water, and I've been talking all day to several folks uh, who have been going through this storm. And, and I just want to say, uh, first and foremost, these people, I can no longer talk to them because they're losing power and they are losing battery on their phones. But earlier today, uh, I talked to a woman, Michelle, who lives in downtown Fort Myers. I talked to her before the worst of Ian began, while she still had power and while she had phone battery. She told me, this was again, before these videos came out, she regretted not listening to the emergency evacuation order, that she was embarrassed that she did not listen to that order. Uh, and at the time we spoke, it was simply too late for her to leave. Here's a part of our conversation. I was the one that kind of didn't want to leave because I felt like um, others were staying and with other experience and I felt like we were up in a, but I actually have a very nervous stomach. Uh, it's a pretty intense, so I'm a little nervous. Sydney, I, I hope she's not beating herself up too badly here. I mean, right. she would, certainly would not be the first person to think they can just ride out the storm. Right, and, and she is on the 17th floor of her building. Uh, I, I actually lived two doors down uh, from where she lives, and it is on the Caloosahatchee River. So it, at the 17th floor, she thought, okay, mm -hmm. I'm okay from the flooding. I'm okay, I've got that. But you got to think about the fact, right, that, that she, along with all these other people, mm -hmm. they've likely already lost power. They could be out of power four days and if there is an emergency because of that flood water even though you're at you know floor 17 people are not going to be able to get right. to you quickly you're not going to be able to get out quickly in fact governor DeSantis just talked about that he said for the people uh, who did not evacuate um he said we know you're calling us we have noted that you have called us but we cannot go out emergency responders cannot go out to you until it is safe for them to do so so now they have to wait your former colleagues i know that before the power went out you were talking to several of them what exactly were they telling you right so uh, i used to work at a station in fort myers like i said just as of uh, a couple weeks ago they have lost power in the newsroom as well and, and as you were looking before at that track the radar this is this is game time, right? And this is the time that that the viewers in that area really need to hear from the station. Uh, they cannot go on the air, at least at last check. They are using uh, iPhone uh, flashlights to put on the anchors and they are using those flashlights recording on cell phones to put messages out on Facebook. At last check, I know they had the ability to use uh, radio, but you know, the, the one thing about these storms is they don't discriminate, right? So whether you're a politician, you're a journalist, no matter who rich, you poor. are, rich, poor, it does not matter. Mm -hmm. You are equally susceptible and people are feeling that. And my heart breaks for these people. It's going to be a long road ahead. Um, but I know that there are going to be a lot of people that rally around that area. Uh, we're praying for your former colleagues. I know Thank you, you love them. Thank, Thank you. you. Great perspective.